Hello, hello. Today, I would like to start a tutorial on how to use the ship designer in order to allow you to build your own ship from start to end. In the first episode, I'll explain the interface, the buttons, the menus, the properties, and so on. The idea is that by the end of this first episode, you'll have a very good idea of what does what. I'll start by introducing the ship designer itself, and then I'll walk you through all of the tools one by one. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll close absolutely all of the windows so I start with a blank slate and this is to allow you to go through all of the tools with me one by one. The movement of the camera is done through your WQSD keys just as if you were moving your character and whenever you want to turn the camera itself you need to hold the right click down. This is what allows you to turn the camera. Now, if you press tab, it will lock the camera on your cursor, just as if you're controlling the character itself. To unlock it, we simply press tab again. Now, on the top left of your screen is where you will find the menu that allows you to load previously saved ships. Since you probably don't have any of those, we're going to be going to the prefabs. Prefabs are ships that were made from the devs and made available to anyone playing the game. They are fully functional and will allow you to experiment with the ship designer with no fear of breaking something and just having as much fun and tries as you want. The first button is the Asset Browser. This is where you will have the list of all of the components that go inside of your ship. By default, it is the names of the components that are being displayed. However, if you right click, you can ask to have small or big icons to make it a little bit easier. The eye icon that is displayed on the left column allows you to hide or show all of the components listed under that category. Even though they are no longer visible, those components are still selectable. If you wish to not select the elements that you have hidden, simply press the lock next to the eye you have pressed. You can hide, show, lock or unlock multiple different combinations of the components in order to access the parts of the ship you would like to work on. You can press down on the Alt key while clicking on the eye or the lock in order to hide or show all of the other categories at once. The next button is the toolbox. I won't be going over the tools of the toolbox right now. I'll be doing it later in this video. For now, just know that if ever you've closed your toolbox by accident, it is on that button that you press to get it up to appear again. I'll skip the tool options for the same reason and go immediately to the multi-user undo system. The multi-undo system is the history of all of the changes you have made on your ship. This includes selection, but it also includes uh, movements of the UI elements on the screen. The menu itself is not often used, but for now just know that by pressing Ctrl W to undo, you can undo a selection, a UI movement and so on. The materials button opens the materials and alloys that can be used for your ship. By clicking on any of those materials or alloy, you are pre-selecting the materials tool. I'll be detailing the tool a little bit after. Next is the scene view if you want to select the different components of your ship through the menu and have a nice list with all of the grouped items. The properties is one of the most important windows in the editor. It will allow you to change the settings of any object that is selected. This is with the only exception of Yolo itself. But if you want to change the value of a lever, of a button, of a display, it is through this menu that you will want to change them. The YOLOL editor has got its own dedicated window. This is what's going to allow you to edit the YOLOL. I won't be going in depth in YOLOL in this video at all. Maybe in the next video, I would really recommend you check the Wikipedia. It has very interesting links to tell you how it works and how to do your own. It's also important to note that in order to edit YOLOL, you need to have this window open and have selected a YOLOL chip, otherwise it won't work. 
the building budget is going to show you all of the different limitations that are placed upon your ship design. This includes transponders, lamps, cables, pipes, bolts, and the amount of stuff your ship can have in general. It is really important to keep an eye on it, else you will find yourself in a situation where you can no longer place any objects due to your budget limitations. Now, as you can see, during this tutorial, I've been moving the windows all over the place. I highly recommend you make yourself a layout that is uh, tailored to your needs. I'm moving all of those windows um, all over the place because I'm opening them up one by one to show you what they're all about. Now, as you can see, I cannot place those transponders at all. They keep disappearing when I place them. This is due to the fact that your ship can only have one transponder. But it's also to show you that whenever you reach that building budget, you can no longer place the items that will exceed the building budget. Now, the painting tool is a fun tool to use, but it's really difficult to master. It's also very important if you want a nice looking ship. The tool options will allow you to change the size and depth of your brush depending on what you want to, uh, to paint. As you can see right now, I'm only painting the decals because that is what's being selected. The eye and the lock in the asset browser can also be used in order to paint different components of your ship. The material cost of the ship is going to be the amount of resources and credits you need to use in order to acquire the ship. It is divided in three different categories. What is required, what is available, and what is missing. The required column is all of the raw resources needed to craft your ship. The available column is all of the stacks of resources that you have inside of your station or capital ship right now. And the missing column is what you need to uh, acquire in order to spawn your ship right now. Please note, the available column is by default using what is inside of your cap ship in your station. So if you craft autocannons, thrusters and so on, these will be included into the available cost. Unchecking the use parts in a station storage will make sure that you only use your raw resources and nothing more. The full parts list is going to show you all of the different components that your ship needs to be crafted. The virtual mouse is used to add some weight to your cargoes during some test flights. This is very important to make sure that your ship still flies straight or still has the speed you want it to have when you test it. This is the thruster naming tool. It is a very dangerous tool to use, please use it with caution. It is used in order to name all of the thrusters of your ship at once, either manually or automatically. I'll be doing a separate tutorial later to show you how to set up your thrusters and in this video I'll show you how to use this tool properly. In the meantime, to avoid breaking your ship, please make sure that when you use it on automated mode, you have less than 50 thrusters total. Plasma, box, triangles, maneuvers, less than 50. The next very important tool is the save tool. Please note that when you save your ship, it is sent to a frozen byte server. This is an important information because it means that should ever something happen to your computer, all of your saves are safe. They will not be lost. However, the auto saves, which are made automatically, are done on your computer. This is why saves are quite long and auto saves are really quick. The deletion tool will delete whatever is currently being selected. Usually we use the key bind, which is super. The undo and redo buttons are the tools that are going to allow you to undo any mistake you did or go back uh, should it be fine. Usually the key binds are used, which are control W and control Y. Please note that the windows that were placed on the UI, such as the asset browser, the toolbox, and so on, should you ever move them or select them by mistake, you can also undo and redo those. They are counted in what you can do. The four next buttons are for the modules. So you've got create, attach, detach, and save the module. These will allow you to bind different objects together and move them all as if they were one. So if ever you're moving many thrusters, many weapons, or you really like the way you did that cockpit layout, you can attach all of them together, save them, which is then going to set them into your asset browser, 
edit them all at once, move them all at once, it's a very important tool. Whenever you save a module, you will be prompted to give it a name. Do so, and when you save the module, it is then going to be into your asset browser as you see here. Modules are always indicated by these green dots. Should you click on one of these green dots, you will select all of the items that are currently under that module. This is the test flight mode. It is extremely important as this is what's going to allow you to make sure that your ship works as intended before buying it. During the ship test, please note that there are no colliders. This means that you'll be going through the stations, through the buildings and so on. Unlike the collisions, however, your inventory really is the real one. So if ever you take something outside of your inventory during a test mode and then you leave the test mode, that item will be permanently lost. Please be careful about that. Test mode is a great opportunity to check that your ship is flying correctly, that your YOLOL is behaving as you want it to behave, and honestly just to have fun and blow up stuff. To leave the test mode, very simply press F5 or escape and then press the leave test mode button. The show spaceship orientation is just that. It shows you where is the front and where is the top of your ship regarding the spawn inside of a station, not the cap ships. Those are independent and it's completely independent of the orientation in which you have put your flight controller. Transform mode local and transform mode global uh, determine how you can uh, move and rotate the parts of your ship. Global uses the station as a reference, whereas local will use the part itself as a reference. This is important if you want to insert pieces in odd angles or in odd positions. This is where it can be very convenient to go from one mode to another. The snapping tool allows you to have all of your different uh, ship components to snap properly together as if they were magnetized. This works if you know where are the um, uh, snapping points on your ship components. I'll show you where they are a bit later in the video. All you need to know for now is that if it's annoying you, that's where the button is to turn it on and off. The drop down menu possesses different visualization tools of which you will find the center of gravity of your ship, the center of thrust of your ship, and the um, exhaust damage of your, the thrusters of your ship. The later of which is going to tell you if your thrusters are going to be damaging your own ship or not. Now, as you've seen me click on the top menu, you would have also noticed that quite a few of the tools in the toolbox were also being selected. This is because both of them are linked, the menus and the tools. The three tools you will be using the most are move, rotate and select, each of which has its own hotkey should you want to access them with your keyboard. If you want to copy and paste an object, the easiest way to do so is to hold down the mouse key and then to drag one of the move arrows. This will create a copy of the object currently being selected. The bolt tool will allow you to place individual bolts. Selecting the tool will show all of the existing bolts in a light blue color. This is the automated bolting tool. It's the tool that's going to allow you to bolt faster different components of your ship together. Please be careful when you use it. It's just like the thruster naming tool. It's quite easy to end up with issues. The cables and pipes tool is a double tool. It does two things, cables and pipes. You can change which one you want to use in the tool options. Whenever you're using this tool, it will indicate if a pipe or a cable is broken or unfinished with red squares for the cables and orange squares for the pipes. The durability tool is the tool that's going to tell you if there are any issues with the integrity of your ship. Should any of the parts of your ship go under a durability of one, they will start to give you durability errors and detach from your ship. Those parts will be displayed in red. 
right clicking while using the durability tool will display the strengths of your beams. Since the durability value that is displayed for your ship is always equals to the lowest durability of all of the components in your ship, the way you increase the durability in your ship is by checking out those orange boxes you will see when using the durability tool. This will tell you what parts need to be reinforced in order to increase the durability of the ship. Using the snapping tool reveals the snapping points which are used by the auto snapping option. The tool works by selecting a snapping point on a first component and then selecting a snapping point on a second component. This will move the first component to get it to align its snapping point onto the one you selected on the second component. The socket tool will place two sockets and link them together on the given components that you have selected. This is mainly used for displays, progress bars, buttons, any of the components that you'd usually find in a cockpit. The painting tool is used with the paint colors. The painting tool has got quite a few options that are going to allow you to choose the size of the brush, the depth of the brush, if you want to paint components or if you want to paint decals, and for the components, if you want to paint layer one, two, or both. The materials tool works pretty much the same way as the painting one does. You've got a list of materials from which you can choose, and you've got a few different settings that are going to allow you to choose the size of the brush, the depth of the brush, and how much you really would like to transform. The welding tool is the tool that's going to allow you to weld all of your beams together. It also has quite a few options allowing you to choose between a local weld or a global weld. The non-welded beams are going to be represented in orange. Uh, those means that a weld can be used on them. The welding tool also gives you the possibility of using welding blocks. The welding blocks will work on pretty much everything. Uh, this will allow you to clump up quite a few objects uh, together and can be a good alternative to bolts if you start to run low on your bolt budget. The last tool in this list is the decals tool. You will find all of the decals in the asset browser. When using decals, you will have to be very aware of your decal coverage. It's your budget. It's indicated at 600 max. This does not mean 600 decals. The bigger your decal, the bigger the budget it's going to require. And if your decal is over multiple plates at once, it will be counted multiple times on your budget. So please do beware of using decals on small plates. In order to be able to move or rotate a decal, first you need to select the decal tool. Then you need to click on your decal and in order to be able to move them or to rotate them, you need to use the hotkeys to go uh, towards the moving tool or the rotating tool. If you click directly on the rotate or the move tool, you will not be able to select your decal. This concludes my video on the tools of the ship designer. Thanks a lot for watching it. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to build a ship from start to end. See you next time. Thanks again and bye bye.